You're listening to As Read By Me, the podcast where writers read and readers listen. My name is Peter Waits, and this is my story, Hal 9000 and his cousins have arrived. As Read By Me. In November, I'll be celebrating another birthday. I'll turn 75. I'm old, and last week I was reminded of how old I am and how things are so very different today than they were in my past. I have a daughter, Laura, and she's married to Mark, and they moved from New Jersey to Florida, and last week I was a driver. I drove Laura and her son, Reuben, and her daughter, Ileana, and their dog, Bob Marley, to their new home in Parkland, Florida. In the course of the trip, I was asked what time it was, and the age difference between me and my two grandchildren clearly manifested itself. I answered, a quarter to four. Like I said, I'm old. Ileana, at ten years old, was stumped. A quarter to what? A quarter to quarter two? In a sign of the time, she didn't understand my answer. In the digital age, no one says a quarter to or half past or ten to or anything like that. In days long gone, when talking about the time, these were the common terms and easily understood when I was growing up. Now, when math itself was no longer explained the way it was, these analog time terms are a mystery. Now, when asked what time it is, an exact digital response is given. It is no longer almost this or almost that. Now it is exactly something. As for the analog expression of a quarter to four, in digital terms, it was 3.45, 15 minutes before 4 o'clock. Lots of things are different now. Some things are better, some things are worse, and some things are just different. The music is different. I don't know and I can't sing along with any of the new songs. They don't register in my brain. When traveling and my car radio was on, I searched for a station that plays oldies. And when I can't find one, I either find a talk show or turn the radio off. I don't know or even care about a television program anymore because none of them sound interesting. I record old programs, especially the original Law and Order. I chanced upon an old favorite, though, the A-Team, and I now record them, too. My keychain has tags to quickly identify me when I go shopping. In the stores I request, I'm not a person. I don't have a name. I have a code. To let the company keep tabs on my purchases and my frequency in the store, my anonymity is long gone. The shopkeeper or the clerk doesn't know me. The computer does. All my buying habits are very, very carefully recorded. Instead of getting green stamps when I shop, instead of accounting enough of them to qualify for a gift, a computer keeps track of how much I have spent, so at Thanksgiving I might qualify for a free turkey. And the clerk who no longer records my purchases, who in boredom just swipes my purchases over a screen that reads a UPC code, she can't make change. The clerk position has been dumbed down. For change, the clerk gives me what the computer says I have coming back to me. If the electricity fails, the clerk is literally in the dark. I'm not exaggerating. If my purchase was for $1.99 and I gave the clerk $2, he'd look at the screen to see how much change I have coming back to me. On days when I have free time or simply feel cantankerous, after the clerk enters the dollar amount I have given him, I reach into my pocket and hand him some change. He stares at it. His mystified look is always accompanied by, You don't have to give me that. Yeah, I know, I say, but I want to. And it is met by silence, squinting eyes, and confusion. My smartphone has GPS capability, so another computer somewhere always knows where I am. The government does, too. Cameras are attached to overhanging structures at more and more intersections and overpasses, and one of them last year said I was driving too fast on my way to Baltimore, and I got a speeding ticket in the mail. I wasn't stopped by the police. I was apprehended by a camera and a computer. As far as I know, parts of the Maryland State Department have been outsourced. The person reading the information about my speed and sending me the traffic ticket was in a remote location, perhaps in Baltimore or perhaps in India. Perhaps it was a thief looking to say, I wonder who's on the road right now. Let's break into the house. And another government agency knows my whereabouts because of my use of the Easy Pass. Periodically, my bank records that the Easy Pass bandits have withdrawn more money to cover my future trips. 
because I don't need a teller in a tool booth because I saved the highway units money, they charge me a monthly fee for the transponder. I'm not bashful. I'm not finished exposing myself. I am complicit in giving my identity away. I have no idea who gets to read my emails, and my thoughts are recorded on Facebook. Who knows who else is keeping track of me? I know someone is because I have heard that job seekers have been denied employment because of their opinions expressed on the Internet. Hal 9000 and his cousins have arrived, and I'm not happy. With all the electronic gadgets I and the rest of us have accumulated, the reality is we have invited Hal into our life, and now we cannot escape his presence. Thanks for joining us. If you love the show and want to keep hearing more great stories, there are three ways you can help. You can hit the subscribe or follow button on your favorite podcast app. You can leave a review for the show on iTunes. Or you can go to asreadbyme.com and click the donate button. Every little bit helps us continue to amplify the eclectic collection of stories and voices that make our show unique. If you're a writer or know one who should be on our show, send an email to writers at asreadbyme.com. Thanks for lending us your earballs once again, and we'll see you next time on As Read By Me.